Okay, in this video, we are making this nice camel. This is the newest pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. And when I say newest, right now it is September 15th, 2020. So this pattern is going to be in the clubhouse exclusive to Funny Faces Club members until October 15th. 2020 and then sometime in November it'll be available in the shop at shiny happy world for anybody to make but right now it is exclusive to club members and I'm going to talk you through how to make it so in a just a quick nutshell overview of what is quilt as you go because all of my quilts I make with using a modified quilt as you go method and fusible adhesive applique and I've got a whole workshop called let's make a quilt it's free it takes you in great detail with videos through all of the steps that I do but just as a quick overview before we get started here I'm going to just talk you through the basics of it so I start out don't look at the applique right now I start out just with the backing block and I quilt that to the batting only not to the backing and I do that before I do the applique and before it's a whole quilt because then I can really do all of these fun curves and everything and I'm only maneuvering a small block through the quilt so it makes it really easy to maneuver around so you quilt the background block to the batting press it all flat let it cool take your pattern I use the printable fusible adhesive because I'm lazy and I don't like to trace Print your pattern out on the paper, cut them out, make the, fuse those to the fabric, and then get all of your pieces fused down over all of your quilting. So you don't have to work around the, the animal face that you're doing. Get those all fused down, outline them all. Then I trim my blocks to size, sew them all together, and finally put the backing on. And then I only am doing some quilting to hold the backing to the front of this. And I just do stitch in the ditch along these seams. That's plenty to hold it together. And it's just straight line stitching. So if you, there's a time when you're going to run the entire quilt through the machine, make it just easy straight line stitching really far apart. I can do an entire uh, couch sized quilt in about a half an hour so it's minimal wrestling the whole machine through the, the whole quilt through the machine time so we're gonna move on this first step though remember is just quilting your background fabric to the batting only okay the first thing you're gonna do is print or trace your pattern onto the paper side of paper backed fusible adhesive. This is the brand that I like to use. I use Heat and Bond Light in all of my quilts. The light has the purple layer label on it. I like the printable sheets because I'm lazy and I don't like to trace, but you can get the exact same stuff uh, by the bolt or by the yard at, at just about any fabric store. So get all of those pieces onto the paper side of your fusible adhesive. The pieces have already been reversed and I've exploded them, by which I mean any pieces that overlap other pieces, I've separated them out so that they are all separate pieces. If you have an electric cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette, any of those, the pattern also has a link to download an SVG file, which is what the easiest thing for you to load up into those. And that doesn't have any of the markings or labels or anything, it's just solid shapes so those machines will cut those out. So get everything onto the paper side of your fusible adhesive and then you're going to roughly cut out all of the pieces and fuse them to your fabric. And when I say rough cut, I mean cut a little bit outside all of the lines. So you want to leave a little bit of paper outside of all of the solid lines. The solid lines are all you're worried about right now. They're the cutting lines, the dotted lines are your placement lines. So the camel fit all on a single page. And it's got just a few pieces. So we've got the camel neck here. He's got two ears. He's got an eyelid, an eye and a nostril, and his head. And that is all of the pieces there. After you get them roughly cut out, you're going to fuse them to the wrong side of whatever fab fabric you're using. Okay, the next step is to clean cut. So here's the rough cut with a little bit of paper all the way around the edge. And then I'm just going to now cut all the pieces out on that solid line. And the reason you do this is so that the adhesive goes all the way to the edge. So right now the adhesive is going past 
the edges of those solid lines. And when you cut it this way, it means that you get adhesive right up to the edge. It covers every last thread and that's going to help it really um, not fray when you wash this and just kind of keep everything perfect. So I've got all of the pieces now clean cut. So next up, I'm going to talk you through all of those dotted lines and what they're for. Okay, next we're going to talk about all of these dotted lines and what they're for and what you should do with them. So all of these are lines that show you the placement of something. They either show you where uh, there's overlap or where a, an applique piece sits on top of another piece, or they show you stitching lines uh, like the mouth and the eyelashes on this face. And depending on how they're being used, I use different marking tools for each of those. So the first thing I do is start out with just a fine tip Sharpie, and I use that to mark any of the things, any applique that's gonna be covered up with a solid black piece, because then I don't need to worry about the black line possibly showing through it. And I also use that to mark any stitching lines. So on this camel, I'm using this to mark the nostril, where the eye goes, and then, since I'm going to be stitching the eyelashes and the mouth, I mark all of these eyelashes and the mouth on the piece. I do the same thing with the eyelid to mark the, um, to mark the eyelash lines on that. So I do all of that first with my black pen. Then, all the rest of the lines, I want those to be either erasable I, I want them to be erasable because either they're still going to show on the top of the fabric or if they're being covered, they're going to, I'm worried about a darker line showing through. So depending on the color of my fabric, my first choice is always to use just a white chalk. It's the easiest thing to erase. Um, if the fabric is too light to use white chalk, I just use a plain Ticonderoga pencil, nothing fancy. And to erase both of them, no matter what it is, I just use a plain white artist eraser. This doesn't leave any residue behind. The Ticonderogas that I like have a dark eraser and I always, that can leave some kind of a grayish smudge behind. So I've done all the markings here and I'm going to show them to you. So on this camel face, I've marked the eye, the nostril, the eyelashes, and the mouth all with that black pen. And then everything else I was able to mark with the white chalk. So I've got marks here showing where the ears are placed, a mark here showing where the neck comes in, and a mark here showing where the eyelid goes. I'll show you all of those in action as we layer the pieces together, and that's going to be in the next video. All right, we're ready to start layering these pieces together. So I always start with the neck or whatever piece is kind of coming off the bottom edge of the block. And I'm going to, I know that this guy goes pretty tightly into the corner. I have, my block is bigger than it needs to be because I'm going to trim it when I'm done. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room, but I am going to put this pretty close in the corner. So next up is the face. Peel off the paper back. And now you're going to start seeing some of these markings in action. So I have a marking here on the neck and a marking on the head. The marking on the head shows where the head connects, so it's not like this, although you could play with it a little bit and turn it to make him looking up or way down, but if you want it to look like my sample, you line it up so that the markings on the head show where it, can, where it overlaps and the marking underneath on the neck shows how far it overlaps. And once your headpiece covers that marking, you're good. So next up, I'm gonna do some ears and they had the same kind of marking. So that shows me where the ear goes and this shows me how far it tucks under. And then I've got the ear on the other side of his head. Same thing, this shows me where it goes and the line on the ear shows me how far I need to tuck it. There we go. And now the eye has got a few different layers going on but I've got a line showing where the eye goes. And I've also drawn a line showing where the eyelid overlaps. So you can match that up with the markings on the head to get that lined up. And now I've got the eyelid and that has markings for the lashes and also for where it overlaps the eye. And the marking on the lashes can be very helpful 
in getting it lined up. So when your lashes are lined up, then you know your eye is lined up. And the last bit is his nostril. That's the smaller of the two ovals. And that goes right there. So now this is ready for me to fuse it down and then I'll do the outlining and then bring it back and talk you through the path I took to outline it. Okay, here the camel is all finished and I'm gonna now walk you through the path that I take to do all of the outline stitching so that I, uh, I, I kind of map my path out ahead of time so that I don't have to stop and tie a knot and start again very often. So I started here up in his head just a little bit above the neck and I went around the head once and then a second time and the second time is when I pick up all the things that are connected. So I picked up his mouth, got around here and then I stitched in and then I went down up to the top part of the mouth back again down up to the top and back to the center. That was four passes on the little curve of the mouth and then back here, that's the second pass on the mouth. And then I just go again, back and forth one more time, and that finishes the mouth. I continue on around, and I go past the base of this ear, and then I do once, twice, three times, double over the base of the ear, and continue past the base of this ear, same thing, once, twice, three times, double up over the base of the ear. That's the second trip around. Now I do one more trip, all the way around the head, third, and then I continue here and start doing this side of the neck. So I stitch down once, twice, three times. Just carry here. Remember, you're never going to see that cut edge. That's going to be in your seam allowance there. And then get over to this side and one, two, three. That's tied my first knot. Now I just have two islands that I need to take care of. So I did the nostril first and I just go once around the nostril because it's black stitching on black fabric and you can't see it anyway. So it's just there to secure this so that it can be washed. And then around the eye, I started with the eyelid. So I started right in here, uh, just a little bit along the straightaway. And I went around the eye once, twice, three times. And then I picked up this eyelash. So I uh, basically, I wanted this eyelash to kind of continue this line of stitching. So once I got back here, I turned around and I went one, two, three, four, and then went up and picked, just traveled and picked up this eyelash. One, two, three, four, continued on into the eye. So I can travel in the black of the eye and you can't see it. Came up here, one, two, three, four, and the last one, one, two, three, four. And then I just need to do one bit of stitching around the lower edge of the eye and tie that off. And that is the camel block.